Hi, I'm Steve from LifeMasteryPodcast.com. Have you ever wondered what it takes to break through to the next level, to follow your dream and not get derailed? Well, it happens to the best of us. Today, we're going to speak to Christina Rose, an actress from California. Nobody knows better than her what it takes to stay the course. I'm a Capricorn, so I'm very much like focused on what needs to be done and what I want to accomplish. So there's always the New Year's resolutions, what I want to accomplish in the year. But then I find myself revisiting things every few months and sometimes every day where I'm like, okay, well, where do I want to be next month? And I'm all very list oriented. So I have, I wake up every day to a list. The night before I'll try to make my list for the day on what I want to knock off because I like checking off the boxes. And Me too. I- Me too. Yeah, you know, let's say I, I hurt my foot, I can't do certain things or whatever. I always say to myself, man, after I'm pissed off, I'll allow myself to be pissed yeah. off for a little while. After that, I'll say, I'm going to do something really interesting that I've been wanting to do or something, I'll just try something new and just see where it leads me. And I may look back on this point where I hurt my foot or business was slow and say, thank God for that. What's One helped thing- you? What's helped you get through it all? Because it hasn't been easy. Man, I'm going to have to think on that one thing. One thing that's like the key to life. Yeah, what is the meaning of life? (laughs) I think it's probably self-acceptance. Hi, I'm Steve from LifeMasteryPodcast.com, and I'm with Christina Rose. She's an actress from California. Welcome to the show, Christina. Hi, thanks so much for having me. I am so excited to meet you. We have a mutual friend, Rich Adrian, who put us together. I think uh, I, w- I want to thank Rich for doing that. Went out of his way for us. Yes, he's awesome. From my New York days. Love you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Christina. So uh, I am, as you mentioned, an actress, and I've been living in Los Angeles for about six years. I lived in New York for about six years as well, from Michigan originally. Mm-hmm. And I'm recently married. I it's, uh, It was our one-year anniversary last month. And Congratulations. We to- Thank you, yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> oh, nice. Ooh, yeah, nice. we just rescued a, a second dog, too. So. Oh, I did that for 10 years myself. I was uh, heavily involved in that. Oh, good. Yeah, we have two rescues, but one is 13 and our new one is two. Mm, that's fantastic. So tell us some of the uh, shows you've been in and movies. And I, do, I know you do a lot of voiceover work as well. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a loaded question. (laughs) I've done a lot of stuff. Um, I started in New York. I did Broadway. I did Grease on Broadway and the National Tour of Oklahoma and um, did a lot of other, they did a show at Disney World, Finding Nemo the Musical and just a bunch of stuff. Done some TV, commercials, voiceover. I'm doing video games now. So... So how long have you been on this path, Christina? Since I was a kid. (laughs) I mean, you know, I started dancing when I was really little. When I was in kindergarten, my mom put me in dance classes and then did my first play in fourth grade, did all the musicals in high school, did my first professional production of the Nutcracker Ballet when I was 12. And then, you know, pretty much after high school, got my BFA in musical theater performance, went on tour, and the rest is history. (laughs) Wow. And so you said you lived in New York. What's the difference between New York and uh, working in L.A.? I love New York. New York has a very special place in my heart, and um, but it's very different. So L.A. is a little bit more laid back. The weather is amazing. So I think it kind of brings a natural happiness within people to live here because you just have this calming energy. And L.A. is a lot more, you know, I'm sure we'll talk about meditation and everything later, but L.A. has got a lot more of that vibe, whereas New York is really like hard hitting and go, go, go. And you live in a really small apartment and it's, you know, you kind of got to be used to a lot of people always around you. But when I was there, New York was good to me. I loved it. But I, you know, now that I'm a little older, I like the slower pace and um, 
I'm glad I did New York first. <laughs> I'm not going to go back <laughs> there. This is my home now, but yeah, I'm glad I did it. So is that the main reason to move to California? Was that, was it for your career? Yes, it was actually. Um, I was actually dating my husband at the time and I had moved out here first and we always knew he was going to follow me, follow me out here, but he was working, he's in the industry. So he was working on a pilot at the time mm. and uh, he was like, you got to go, you got to go now. Cause I was transitioning to film and TV and voiceover so he's like, I'll follow you out there. And, you know, now we're married. And- wow. That's fantastic. Christina, I just want to remind our viewers that this is live. So please write in and subscribe down below. What's been the <laughs> hardest part of being an actress? Oh, my gosh. Well, there's a lot of challenges. I'm sure a lot of people hear this, but you get rejection all the time. Mm. But then you also have your bookings and your successes. So I think that's kind of what keeps you going is... You know, it's never your last job. Somebody told me that, and it's mm. true. You'll get a lot of no's, but then you'll get your yeses too. So yeah. you just got to keep trucking along and knowing that you're going to be good. <laughs> so so what keeps you, I guess, uh, inspired to keep pushing through to the, to the next level, to the next job, or the next level of job? You know, they, I think it's the fact that I just love so much what I do. I'm, really? That's wonderful. It's me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's nothing else I think about. There's nothing else I would rather do. Of course, I love animals. And originally, I thought I was going to be a veterinarian. Oh. But I didn't realize you could become a professional actor when I was that young. And so mm. this was a much better fit for me. <laughs> I don't think seeing the animals in pain would be good for me. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I just love what I do and it gets me up in the morning and I, Mm. you know, even when I go to an audition, if I don't get the job, I'm still happy to be performing that day. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, would you say you're a transplanted New Yorker then, or have you pretty much adapted to the California lifestyle? I'm an LA girl now. (laughs) You're an LA girl. Okay. Yeah. You know, it it is funny because I felt like I was a lot more anxious and Mm. uppity when I was in New York and I am, I'm a Capricorn. I'm a go-getter. I'm very driven and hardworking. But I think this atmosphere works for me. And I, I do try to meditate every day and it just it calms me and it like gets me in the zone. And I mm. do think the weather helps. It really helps people out here to just yeah. have a beautiful day and you immediately have a smile on your face. Yeah. yeah. How important is medit- has meditation been to you from personally and professionally? I think it's been key. And as yeah. I've you know, gone through my life and, and gone through this career, I didn't find meditation till I was here in LA and it has changed the way I audition. It has changed the way I live every day. It's changed my relationships. It's changed my entire being. So I, I feel like it's essential for me and for others. Yeah. So what's your daily practice? Could you explain that to us? I've been using, I have two things. I have this app called Calm. If people are not familiar with it or getting used to meditation, it's a great way to kind of get into it. It's called Calm, C-A-L-M? C-A-L-M. Okay. And it will actually talk you through like 10 minute, 15 minute, 20 minute meditations. You can Mm. choose whatever you're going through your day. Do you need like calming for, calm for anxiety or calm for um, happiness, like mm. whatever one you want to do for the day, whatever you're feeling, if you're feeling anxious, you maybe want to do the one for anxiety. Yeah. Um, and then you can choose the timing. So even if you have like three minutes, but you want someone to kind of go through it with you, you just press play, you put yourself in a, a calming place and mm. it's really good. And then the other thing I use is I go to yoga works. Mm. That's, so I go to the gym every day. And, um, if I'm either at a Pilates yoga class or a meditation or restorative class, mm. Did you do any of that before you hit LA? I mean, I'm a dancer. I've been a dancer my whole life. So I was always in the gym, but Mm. not yoga works. Yoga Mm. works was also an LA thing for me. Yoga was an LA thing for me. I was more of like the gym rat in New York. Sure, sure. Hitting all the like hardcore classes. I did end up getting injured um, as a dancer. So I had to be a little bit more careful what I did with my body as well. So yoga was a natural move, Mm. like transition. Me. Did you meditate when you were in New York? No, I didn't really know about it until oh, LA. It yeah. was not something, I think it would have helped me a lot if I yeah. had known about it. And, you know, but a lot of my friends also have the similar mindset out here. So we talk about those things sure. and do those things. Yeah. Sure. New Yorkers need it the most. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. obviously from New York and uh, I'll tell you, <laughs> I don't know how I made it this many years without doing something to balance off all the stress and uh, 
just the chaos of being multitasking all the time. And even if you're not physically yeah. multitasking, you're mentally multitasking. You know what I mean? Your brain is always going. Uh, do, you, exactly. do you catch it? Do you, do you notice that when your brain is just keeps going and going and you're not in the moment? Are you one of those people that go, hey, I, you know, where, where was I just now? I wasn't here. I think that's normal for everyone. It I don't is. know anyone who doesn't have their mind going everywhere, right. but it really is true that when you focus on meditation and calming yourself and thinking about being in the now, mm. it's a lot easier to connect with that. Yeah. And I, I was actually listening to Calm the other day and they were saying something that can bring you back into the now during the day is like when you're driving, maybe it's a stoplight. And okay, every time I see a stoplight, I'm going to click into the moment. Mm. You know, or it's a baby laughing or whatever it is, just to kind of take yes. you back into what's going on in this yes. very moment right now. And then you're a happier person because you're you're not always so worried about right. what's going to happen next or what happened yesterday. Definitely. I mean, we definitely live more in the past and more in the future than we do in the now. The now is like maybe, you know, a few percent I think uh, of a hundred percent we use uh, where it's actually in the now, because I, I guess it's always more exciting to think of things in the future and, uh, and to complain in our brains about the past. Uh, it, it becomes hab habitual, you know, and I, I found the same thing that uh, if you don't stop for a moment and, and, and click into the now, it's just going to pass you by so fast, you know, yeah. and, and it's a shame, even though what's happening in the now may not be very special, you know, it's still, real. <laughs> yeah. And I think what's happening in the now is what we're thinking of getting us to the next point hmm. instead of just taking a moment to enjoy what's happening right now, that hmm. wind coming on you, the sun hitting you. Hmm. It doesn't have to be, I'm in this moment to get to an hour from now. Yes, yes, now. yes, yes. I, I couldn't agree more. I study Eckhart Tolle and he's hmm. big into finding ways to get into this moment so we don't wake up one day and say, oh my God, where did my life go? You know? Yeah. And uh, a couple of things he says is, you know, when you're walking or doing something, just do it a slightly bit slower. It'll tell yourself, mm -hmm. ah, you know, I'm moving too fast. Or pause and, and take notice to what's around us. You know, it's, exactly. uh, it's beautiful when you can do it without judging, you know, and just yeah. uh, take it for what it is, you know, R really interesting, really interesting. Exactly. Is, you, is your husband into this stuff? I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm trying on my end too, but know. Hey, you know, it's, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> it's not that he's not interested. I've talked to him many times about it and he says, this is something that he wants to do. But I think like a lot of people, you're so busy and there's so much going on. It's like, I'll get to that. Yeah. And when I do, it'll be great. But I keep telling him oh, it's great now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I've been married for about, uh, 17 years now and my wife doesn't really need it. I, it, you know, she has, she has a different type of lifestyle and a different brain than I do. So, uh, yeah. she, she doesn't need it quite as much as I do. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, whatever works for people. And, you know, there was a time when we weren't ready for this. Yeah, yeah, that's I, kind of absolutely. the way it goes. Yeah. So, so tell me more about your voiceover work. I was uh, I was watching on Vimeo uh, a lot of your stuff. What, really interesting stuff. How did you get involved in 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 uh, voiceover work? You have a great voice, and and your singing voice. Oh my God, you got um, some pair of lungs. Oh my <laughs> God, really fantastic voice. I started hearing you sing. Like, oh, she's got a good voice. And you started. I was like, oh my God, she's got some voice. <laughs> thank you. So uh, thank you. Being a singer first and an actor, it kind of was like a natural transition. Um, people had always told me, oh, you should consider voiceover. And I worked for this company in New York called Animated Storyboards. Oh. And I had done motion capture for them. And they started to do voiceover there. And I had built a relationship with them. And I told them, well, you know, I'm an actor too. And I'm kind of interested in this, if there's anything I'm right for. So they had me audition for one of their jobs and I got it. And then after that, I started kind of slowly getting some other work and then built up a reel. And then when I moved to New York, my agent here picked, um, sorry, LA, my agent here picked me up and she's been incredible. Uh, uh, yeah, she's amazing. And so we've just been doing a lot of commercials and uh, radio and video games. And I would like to get into animated features and yeah. series. 
Wow. That's my next goal. I'm working on that this year pretty hard. And then, um, yeah, also maybe anime. I'm starting to really consider that as well. So wow. anything that kind of expand the repertoire. <laughs> so you've really gone in quite a few different directions. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I, well, because you start in musical theater, right? Hmm. And it's theater, and that's something you can do in Michigan. But then when you move to L.A. and New York, there's all these other opportunities that open up that Hmm. you can't do in a smaller state. So you can Hmm. do more film and TV and commercials. In Michigan, I didn't have those opportunities, so I knew I had to move. Hmm. So what would you say to the people that say, oh, she's just born that way. She's just talented. She just has a great voice. Or, you know, what would you say to something like that? They they don't see the hundreds and thousands of hours that you practice in, uh, right? Yeah, I don't know if people have seen this meme that's been going around. It's the iceberg where it shows the tip of the iceberg and it says success. And then uh-huh. the bottom. Sure, well, I love that. <laughs> I mean, that's it in a nutshell. I think, yes, there's a natural talent that came along with it. I started dancing young and my mom is a singer. My dad's a musician. Oh. So I think I kind of had those natural abilities. And I also performed in my family's band growing up. <laughs> oh, wow. But But working professionally at a young age, I mean, obviously that helps the growth of what you can become as a performer and so much hard work behind closed doors. I mean, constantly. And yeah, Yeah. so that iceberg is like, that's the key. (laughs) So I think they say luck is what happens when preparedness meets opportunity. So you truly have to be prepared, right? Yeah. I feel like that's kind of what happened with my Broadway show because I had auditioned for the national tour of Greece (laughs) and you know, went through all the callbacks and the whole thing. And then my agent called me and said, they have an opening on Broadway and they want you. So then I had like one final audition. And so it was like, like you said, having all the pieces all together. Yeah, yeah. I watch uh, some interviews with uh, Will Smith and he's just a great interview. This guy is like the people that say that I'm lucky. He goes, I beat on my craft every single day. He goes, I'll never be the best actor. I'll never be the best singer. He goes, but what I do, I'll always be very good at it because my craft is very important to me and I will beat on it every single day and be the best I can at whatever I put my mind to. And that just sends shivers through my spine. So that was so fascinating that uh, so much belief in himself, you know what I mean? To continually push through each level. Uh, just find, just really, really cool stuff. Uh, I find people like that very inspirational. Anybody you find inspirational off the top of your head? Yeah. Um, I mean, career-wise, uh, one of the classics is Lucille Ball. Oh, so when, yeah. Like, her comedy, and it's inspired me, and I've used it for many things. It started in theater, but I still use her for different things. She's such an inspiration. And then another um, actress that I use a lot is Amy Adams because she's so multi-talented and she does the musicals but then she Mm. does the dramas and she just has just such a diverse talent so she's Mm. great and then also my parents really inspire me a lot um they own their own businesses and i also own my own business now i have a singing telegram company (laughs) i used to have are you kidding me i'm so serious (laughs) i I, I had one for about seven years did you? I did. Uh, oh my gosh, we'll have to talk later about it. Yes. I mean, we can talk a little about yes. it here, but that's yeah. really cool. Wow. <laughs> Christina, I just want to remind our viewers that this is live, so please write in and subscribe down below. That's why yeah. this goes back many years. This is when it was first coming out in New York. This is the and it's early still 80s. Going, which is crazy. Like, I can't believe how popular it still is and how many people know about is it. Is it? Here. New York, I, I, it died many years ago here. <laughs> In LA, it's thriving. <laughs> really? Oh God, I, I haven't heard that. In, oh, that's so funny. Uh, we've done some yeah. funny stuff. <laughs> so, like, I talk to my parents a lot about what they do for their business, and it's helped me with my business. And then also, um, Andy and I. Andy's my husband. We have a production company, so a lot of the business stuff my parents have really inspired me with. Oh, so you do? Your husband does video production. He does a lot of stuff too. He's, I mean 
Oh gosh, he's he's in the industry. He's an editor, writer, director, yeah. um, story producer. Yeah. So does a lot of stuff. Wow. Yeah, wow. Very talented. <laughs> so what, what what do you think your parents have contributed uh, mostly to your career and your success? Let's say, uh, let's say your your health and success. You know, the, your your mental health. Let's say. You know, I had very very supportive parents and I'll never forget I always tell people this but when I was little my mom would always sing to me going to bed and then when I started singing more and she you know put me in competitions and everything she would always say to me Christina you can be whatever you want to be mm. you are going to do it you can do it and I think having that belief in yourself as a child is mm. so important yeah you know and I think it's important for parents to do that for their kids and uh, even my dad and my mom having me in the band and like always encouraging me to that, like giving me the solos and just always encouraging me to be my best and mm. believing in my talent, you know, um, has always been very great. Yeah. Do you find that you're um, very self-conscious about, let's say, your weaknesses over your strengths? Do you have like a magnifying glass on your weaknesses or what you feel your weaknesses are? I think I've used to do that a lot in New York. And I think as I've grown as a performer, I've come to really accept my strengths mm. and also my weaknesses. Mm. But like, I don't know, I just accept myself more, accept mm. myself as a performer and believe in myself more and, and know that I'm deserving yeah. and not focusing on the weaknesses. That doesn't yeah. really help. I mean, not that I don't train and I don't always try to be the best performer that I can be, mm. but it doesn't help you to just berate yourself and make you feel bad. But it's, it's so, uh, it's so common though for us to do this to ourselves. Don't you think, you know, something oh, yeah. negative happens and we'll turn it over in our brains, you know, for hours sometimes, maybe even days. If someone yeah. gives you a compliment and it might last 10 seconds, five seconds. I mean, not, not, maybe not you, but you know, so many yeah. people that I know, including myself at times, it just uh, comes and goes so quickly, but yet something negative happens or something we perceive to be negative yeah. happens and we can't let go of it, you know, unless we catch ourselves and say, hey, you're doing that thing again, you know, it might be good to pull off of it, you know, uh, and. Uh, yeah. And I truly think that having the meditation in my life yeah. has helped with that because I was a much more negative person and I say in New York because like I've had this growth here in LA and I still was, you know, I had positive aspects of my life sure. in New York as well too. But like I would go to an audition if it didn't go as well as I thought, like I would cry and sure. be so upset and say, what did I do wrong? What did I do? Now it's more like, okay, well that wasn't as much as I wanted it to be, but yeah. what did I do good? Or like, yeah. what can I improve upon? That's great. So that's kind of like communicative way that I talk yeah. to myself now versus. That's great. Yeah. You give yourself a little bit of a morning period, you know, a realistic morning period. You pick yourself up, right? You dust yourself yeah. off. What can I do different next time? And you move on, right? Yeah, exactly. What do you think would have happened if you stayed in New York? Uh, my life has changed so much here. I mean, being married, having my family, my husband, my dogs, my, mm. my friend base here, my sisters out here. I mean... I don't know. Like, I, I think everything happens for a reason. I think we all have our path and this was my journey. And if I hadn't had New York, I wouldn't be where I am today either. Yes. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, this is how, how it's supposed to be for me right now. And I'm, I'm good with that. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the most challenging and let's say the most rewarding part of your career thus far? I think the rewarding part is honestly the fact that I get to do what I love every day yeah. And that I'm getting paid for it and that I've been able to support myself as a performer. All I do is perform and mm -hmm. I don't have like a, a side job where I'm like a bartender, or, you know, yeah. anything like that. I, and I can't believe that I'm still able to do that, you know, yeah. and with my husband, I mean, he supports himself with his passion and, you know, it doesn't mean that there's not struggles and we don't have ups and downs, but, um, we wake up every day and we go, okay, we get to do what we want to do today. Yeah. So, you know, because there seems to be two different schools of thought, you know, the, the person that dedicates all their time and effort to uh, their dream and uh -huh. the other one that has the plan B and maybe works a side job because either they want to or they have to or they don't want to fully commit to mm -hmm. their dream. Uh, how important has it been to you to, to not take, let's say, a, a side hustle of any sort and uh, just focus on your career? I think it's complicated because mm. I think as far as the acting industry, you can't not have money. 
So if you're not working, you have to have a side job, Yeah, whatever that means. And I'm just saying that some of my side jobs have always involved performing, whether it's singing in a band or it's, you know, doing an entertainment party or like mm. dancing for this event, you know, it's always been entertainment related. Um, so I, I don't think that people, I think people need to have a security blanket. And if people are scared to totally take the whole leap, mm. then make sure you're prepared to take the leap. But I do think it helps to eventually take the leap, but don't yeah. do it if you, you're not feeling secure and you don't have money. Cause that's just another dangerous slope. Either yes. Way. Yes. Cause, uh, and, and not just being an actor, I would think anybody wanting to fulfill their passion, um, you know, would be scared if they thought about it, or maybe even they don't feel like they're worthy or talented enough. What would you say to the people that have been thinking about doing something their entire life and have been fearful to take that step? What advice would you give them? I think if they're passionate about it and it's something that they really want to do, they should do it on some level. So let's say you want to be an artist and you want to paint but you're on your, in your job and say, I don't have time. Well, maybe take an hour at night to paint at mm. least you're doing what you love. And then maybe it will eventually lead to making money off of it. Mm. But we do have enough time in a day to do more things that we love. And I wanted to say that when I was in New York, we talk about people who are like, Oh, one whole focus is I have to do my career, my career, my career. Mm. I think I was kind of like that. And I think I've found that there's things that ground me in life, like yeah. spending time with my husband or I do paint. So mm. like I always wanted to paint and it took me breaking my foot. I broke my foot when I was filming once oh. <laughs> and I took six months off and my husband was like, well, now you can paint. And now it's something that I do more often and I just lock in some time to do that. And I think people just, I get that we're busy, but I think people can find more time in their day than they're willing to accept. Yeah. So, isn't that interesting? What I've found is in the past, let's say, 10 years or so, let's say uh, uh, I own a video production company. So, you know, when work is slow, I have two options. I can either uh, get more work or right. I can use that time to do something I wouldn't ordinarily do. And as I get older, I use that time again, about once a year, maybe for a few weeks or a month or so, you know, uh, production will be down like 20, 25 percent. Not a big deal. But it allows me the time to do the things that are most important, like doing this, let's say, this podcast. Right, exactly. This I picked up uh, a year ago when uh, business got slow, maybe by about like 35, 40%. And I was like, okay, so I picked up the clients I needed, but that wasn't gonna start coming in for another month or so. It in my business, it takes about a month or so to start generating from that time. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do something really interesting. So I started doing this. And uh, so whenever something happens where, <laughs> Yeah, you know, let's say I, I hurt my foot, I can't do certain things or whatever. I always say to myself, man, after I'm pissed off, first I'll allow myself to be pissed yeah. off for a little while. After that, I'll say, I'm going to do something really interesting that I've been wanting to do or something, I'll just try something new and just see where it leads me. And I may look back on this point where I hurt my foot or business was slow and say, thank God for that. Right. Exactly. Otherwise, we're too busy. Otherwise, we're too busy. We'll never try anything new. <laughs> yeah, I think that's how I felt when I broke my foot. It was like I was so bummed that oh. I was going to not be able to do anything for like six months. But then I got to paint and it was yeah. really, yeah. That's fantastic. That's really fantastic. I see that you did uh, an Orange Theory uh, commercials. Yes, I did. <laughs> that was so cool. Before I felt their energy and learned their secret, before she pushed me, before I knew that I could work for one hour and burn calories for 36, before that, I never felt like this. And this is before I get even better. Orange Theory Fitness. Keep burning. My wife took some uh, Orange Theory uh, classes and said they were the best workout she ever had. I know. I hear people really love it. She, so she didn't get involved in it because all of her friends are at another gym. So she never did it. And I even a year later got her a membership and she still said, I want to be with my friend. But she said it was the best workout she ever had. Originally was cast on camera for that when we were shooting. And then as I knew there was, because I saw the storyboards, I knew there was going to be a voiceover. Mm. So I kind of ended up talking to the producers at one point after I'd worked with them. And I was like, well, you know, I do do voiceover too. So, you know, if you want to connect with my agent and then so I auditioned for that oh, and that's so great. don't normally get to do both. That's like the only spot I've ever done both. That's fantastic. 
cool. That's great. <laughs> and I saw I saw some movies. Do you know martial arts or those roundhouse kicks were just from uh, like uh, dance class and stuff? Oh. So I actually trained for the movie you're talking about. Um, I did some training for that. I think you're talking about Death of the Dead. Mm -hmm. So they had like a trainer for us to do a lot of that. But I, with my dance background, I had a lot of the flexibility. Sure, sure. So that stuff kind of came a little easier to me. And I, I took karate when I was really little. So <laughs> I was like a white belt. So that doesn't... my parents own a CCW business. So I actually, do you know what that is? No, what's CCW? Concealed carried weapons permit. Oh, <laughs> so Michigan. Yeah, I mean, we don't have to get into guns or anything, but <laughs> I, I just got my gun permit yesterday. <laughs> we a lot of a lot, me and my wife went down. We just got them. Just got it yesterday. It's the, we go. got funny yeah, coincidences right. here. Yeah, they own a gun range, so I grew up shooting guns. So that's like kind of another skill. And I also taught self defense when I was really young. I learned a lot of self defense training, which I think played into some of the karate and martial arts training that I did later. Um, and then, of course, like the voiceover stuff, I'm learning, you know, dialects and different character voices. Yeah. I mean, the list goes on and on. Mm. So it's been, you know, my husband and I, after we went to Italy, we decided we wanted to become a renaissance couple. Mm. So what is we that? Just, the best human beings that we can be, which means in relationships, in life, in our career. And so <laughs> like this other day, I had this opportunity to like sing jazz, which is not something that I normally do. And he was like, well, you're a renaissance girl now. He's like, learn how to sing jazz and go do jobs. And wow. I did. And it was, you know, really exciting. And it's a good way to look at life, I think, which we talk about. Keep yeah. challenging yourself to be the best you can be. Sure. What's been the most, uh, what's been the scariest thing you've ever done? I think all of it is a little scary. <laughs> I mean, I think moving to New York was scary. Oh, sure. And it, yeah. But scary. I think moving to LA by myself was scary, but exciting. Um, I mean, even booking my first Broadway show was so scary because yeah. it was something I dreamed about since I was a little girl. Mm. So and when you do it, you feel good, but it's always scary. I think getting up every day, going to an audition is scary. Yeah. 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 So what would you, you know? say to people that, uh, I mean, you just keep plugging away and plugging away at it. It's uh, it's very inspirational. Very Thank you. I think, you know, you also kind of need a support system. Yeah. So I don't yeah. think it's hard if you were doing this on your own. Sure. I have my family who's mm. very supportive. I have my husband. I have really good friends. And so even when I get down, someone's there to kind of pick me back up and say, get back on your feet. Yeah. And, and you're heavily into goal setting, you said, right? Yes, very like, much Give so. me an idea of what your, uh, you have New, New Year's resolutions just that you said or anything like that. Yes, I'm a Capricorn, so I'm very much like focused on what needs to be done and what I want to accomplish. So there's always the New Year's resolutions, what I want to accomplish in the year. But then I find myself revisiting things every few months and sometimes every day where I'm like, okay, well, where do I want to be next month? And I'm all very list oriented. So I have, I wake up every day to a list. The night before, I'll try to make my list for the day on what I want to knock off because I like checking off the boxes and Me seeing too. what I Me too. Me too. So, I mean, all that stuff helps. Now, not everybody's like that. So it's not for everybody. Mm. But for me, like, I'm very visual. Like, I need to see, oh, did that. And the check mark feels good. Like, me knock too. that off. Me did too. That. And then me I know what I need to do tomorrow. So, yeah, or, I, I'm exactly um, the same way. Exactly the same way. And, and I like that you said that you revisit your goals often because the times that I don't, I don't grow the, I, I grow the least. I agree. I agree. It's so important to course correct along the way without, of course, without being too obsessive with stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and I think you made a good point. Even if you want to be goal oriented, it's not consistent. And we all kind of fall back a little bit where we're yeah. like, oh man, I haven't thought about that yeah. in a couple months. Let me get back sure. on that. Sure. You know, when you do, it feels really good, but yeah, yeah I'm not like, perfect with it, but I yeah. do my best. I like to be goal oriented. Yeah. My, my mother was a list person and she used to have lists and she used to staple them around her, um, 
uh, her pocketbook you know, around the <laughs> strap and she'd have these long like lists. <laughs> and and I, I was never into that until I hit my 30s. And uh, oh, it's like the best thing ever. I guess I just wasn't ready yet for it or I didn't, you know. But yeah, I'm totally a list person. And as, as I get older, my memory starts fading a little bit. So it's uh, it's helpful to write everything down. And there is a sense of completion, checking things off. I, we, I started a mastermind group. Do you know, do you know what that is? No. A group of people get together online or together, usually around four people is the optimum amount. And you spend an hour and a half and it could be a topic based, it could be, let's say, actors. Um, mm. It could be people in the same field. And you compare um, war stories, you set um, uh, goals and you're held to those goals. You'll, you'll set like a, a one-year goal, a five-year goal, and then you'll set tasks along the way um, mm-hmm. each week towards the, the obtainment of that goal or goals. And uh, you're accountable. And if you, if, you're, yeah. if you don't hold up your end, you're out of the group. It's a yeah. pretty aggressive um, but yet fun way of pushing each other. And it really is amazing because pe- these people will be honest with you in a way that – friends typically won't. And you're in a group setting, we do it online now, but um, you're in a group setting where uh, you want to hear people, like you're, you're in that mode. The mode is, tell me what you think. I really want to hear it. Even if you don't, you know what I mean? You're in that mode. So you're out to hear what's, co- and the information that comes from the other three people is fascinating. I always thought that I'm, that I could do it on my own, everything on my own, because I'm very creative, I'm very business oriented, I'm very physical, I'm very, and I like to uh, go outside my comfort zone. I'm, I'm never inside the box. I don't think I've ever been in the box more than like 10 minutes my entire life. So, I, you know, with that, it's a full sense of security, like oh, I can do everything myself. And when I'm put in a group with other people, it's amazing how much information comes in that is so helpful to my career, to me personally. Uh, it's, and we do it every week, every week for an hour and a half. That's so good. And, you know, I didn't know that you guys called it a mastermind group. We have something like that here in L.A. Oh. So actors do it. And there's this I can't remember the place it is, but they pay for it and they go and they get in their groups. And then so me and some friends said, well, why would we pay for it? Let's get our own little group together. Sure. And I'm glad that you do it consistently. It was something that kind of didn't last very long for us. I think it maybe lasted like a few months or something Mm. like that. And then everybody got busy and no one wanted, you know, could still stick with it. Yes. But it's the Skyping thing is smart because we would always try to go to somebody's house. I know we we did that too. And it's just why it fell apart. And maybe the Skyping is the way to do it. Yeah, it is. It's doomed unless you do it like this. This is the best way to do it. You can just pop online immediately and, uh, and just start hit, hit the ground running. We have, uh, we have sometimes the guys can't get to their home where they have the computer and they'll pull it up on their phone. You know, one guy was sitting in the back seat of his car, you know, where he is, they had to pick up his daughter from the, you know, from uh, the airport. So we had a whole, <laughs> so, so it's cool. So no matter where you are, it's, ideally you don't want any distractions around you, but it's such a great tool. It yeah. will accelerate anybody's career. I mean, it could, the focus could be anything from losing weight to, to building a career to, it could be, it could be people in different businesses and, and get, you can get input from other people that are from yeah. different businesses, a different perspective, or it could be everybody towards the same goal. It could be anything. But the structure is important. If you look it up online, there's a certain structure to follow, uh, business structure, timing and stuff like that, what's allowed, what's not. And that's what will allow it to uh, sustain itself without falling Mm -hmm. apart, too. To, uh, I'm going to talk to some friends about that because I think the Skyping is a good idea. And you, yeah. mastermind.com, you said? Yeah, just look up, just Google mastermind groups and uh, you'll find some really fascinating information. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so far, I think, what a great interview. I'll tell you, uh, if, if there's one thing you've learned in this life, right? One thing that you could tell our listeners <laughs> one thing, I'm going I'm to know one thing, what would it That's be? That's tricky. One. I know. All right, two things. Now, one thing, <laughs> one thing. What's one helped thing you? That, What's helped you get through it all? Because it hasn't been easy. Man, I'm going to have to think on that. One thing, one thing that's mm. like the key to life. Yeah, what is the meaning of life? <laughs> I think it's probably self-acceptance. There you go. I don't know. That just came I, to me. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> it's got to, I was wondering oh, if... Yeah. I was wondering if you were going to say something that's internal or external. I figured you'd say something internal because that's where it all comes from. I mean, that's where it all is. I mean, that's- I think it is. 
Well, how do you how do you have a good relationship with somebody else unless you accept yourself? How do you thrive in your girl your goals unless you accept yourself and what you can do? How do you accept being happy and like loving your life and what you're doing if you don't accept yourself? So, and I think meditation helps with that. <laughs> yeah, no, it it definitely does. My, my yes, yes, yes. So many of us skip over that. And we try to fix the people around us because we're miserable, we're upset or whatever the deal is. So we try to put the energy on other people or complaining about other people when really everything has to do with us. You know, we see the world through our eyes. You know what I mean? We hear the world through our eyes, you know, I mean, through our ears, you know what I mean? Everything we experience is internal. Nothing's outside of us. We interpret yeah. everything with our senses. That's all there mm -hmm. is to it. You yeah, know, it's it's a that was yeah that was that was a I'd say that's a home run for you. That's a, yeah, it's, it really is all internal. For people that will take work, I don't think it's an easy thing. I think a lot of people struggle to accept who they are. I think it's like a human thing to struggle with that. So that's why these techniques help, and actually, I believe will make people happier in life. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And uh, the older I get, the more I realize this type of that type of work is very important. And uh, the reason why I couldn't understand it earlier in life, let's say, is because I pretty much when you do everything else <laughs> and nothing works, you start looking, you know, in rooms that you wouldn't ordinarily go in. <laughs> You know? right, exactly. So that's kind of what it's kind of a wearing down period, I think. Um, so uh, uh, um, it's going to be a lot of great things for you. I can tell. <laughs> Thank you. A lot of great things. Really uh, fantastic. You you got a pretty good start, kiddo. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I love what you're doing as well. I think thank this you. is really cool. And like, I'm excited to see your audiences grow and, you know, more cool people that you have on the show that we can all learn from. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this has really been great, Christina. Is there anything else you'd like to mention? Uh, anything coming up? Anything? Uh... You know, people, I mean, if people want to check out my stuff, they can always look me up, which is Christina Rose. And I do have some video games coming out. You sign NDA, so you can't mention them until they are okay. released. So I have some of those coming out and might be filming again this summer. So yeah, I, mean, I have stuff going on. So people should just kind of okay. check my stuff out. And yeah, I'll put some I'll links down below. I'll put, yeah. Do you play but, video games? Do you like video games? Uh, yeah, I, I love voicing them and I've been watching them more often because and trying to play them because I know it's my world and I have to understand that world. Yeah. Um, and it's more my husband's world as far as playing them. So oh, yeah? I like to watch him play and I watch all the cut scenes and then sometimes I'll jump in. But yeah, that's so cool. You ever like stand behind him and start voicing over it? <laughs> <laughs> in his ear. I'm always commenting on it. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, that would be a good character for me. Oh, I should learn that. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Christina, it's been a pleasure. A real pleasure. You as well. Thanks for having me. <laughs> okay. And uh, I'll put some links down below. And uh, it's been a real pleasure meeting you. You too. Thank you. Yeah.